my main thought about the bus tour when I first heard about it, and also still is that it's a crazy, crazy idea to do something like this. Uh, even now, afterwards, having survived, at least no one died, it's still a crazy idea. But all in all, it's about giving people the education so that they can liberate themselves uh, and that schools function in a way where school students are active participants in the providing of this learning. And those are the things that we're fighting for uh, that you sometimes don't remember that there's so many other people fighting for. And I hope that with this documentary and this uh, bus tour, we could achieve creating this sort of unity that all the things that I am doing in my country is part of something bigger. The Light on the Rights bus tour is about showing that Abesu is real people, not just a website and some leaflets. We needed to visit every member across Europe so they could see and touch us, and we can see in person what they're up to and how we can help them. Ten thousand kilometers. Uh, five thousand kilometers. Five thousand for you. <laughs> Abesu is the organising bureau for European school student unions. We represent school students in general and vocational education and training across Europe. In 2010, we had 21 member and three observer organisations, and we've grown since then. In 2006, the members of ABESU adopted the Declaration of School Student Rights. The Declaration states all the rights that school students are entitled to. That's okay. A lot of road, a lot of kilometers. We will reach uh, Vilnius at 3 o'clock in the morning or 4. <laughs> Let's go. really like to see in Lithuania that when you're an activist in school society you're appreciated and you're supported. The schools in practically most of the cases simply ignore them and because in the administration opinion the those kind of activists they they only pose some sort of a threat to the administration because if the activists are given some sort of rights to change something, the administration has to do a lot, a lot of bigger work. dinner and sleep in the old office. We woke to find our van had been broken into and mostly my camera kit had been stolen. Yeah. Okay, I need to call the police. Uh... 
Hello everybody. Uh, today we have a political work group. Where is the chair? It's ready. All out of light is missing. Okay, super. Yeah, anyone they calling Kahit to Kiel? One of the most important paragraphs in the Declaration of School Student Rights is 5.3. There should be no fees of any kind, uh, as in education should be free. And I believe this also has to do with school food. But the apart one... from free food, it should be healthy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's and not problem. like in England, all fried. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then we did a temporary fix on the van and reversed it into a car. We sorted that out and then jumped on the ferry to Finland. We're having a little cocktail party right now for a Besu. The main thing that obsesses our team board right now is uh, lowering the voting age from 18 to 16 in local elections. Hi, I'm Alina Bowling and uh, I'm the president of the Swedish speaking school student union. The FSS has done a lot of work with, with school democracy and Right now we're actually launching a um, method-based book on, on school democracy. Hi, I'm Teppo Sakken, president of SLL, the Union of Finnish Upper Secondary School Students. Uh, welcome here to our office in Basila, Helsinki. Uh, over there is the railway station where we can leave if we want to go to the Parliament House. Uh, this is our meeting room where some of our board members are working our next year. C especially is, is working very hard, it's mind work. I'm currently working on the uh, budget of, of uh, the state, uh, the state of Finland for next year and uh, trying to find uh, what is good about it and what's not so good and then I'll go to the parliament house next week to tell what they should do with all the money. Welcome to Stockholm. <laughs> I'm Lisa. <laughs> Uh, I'm in the board of Celia uh, Rotsvia. What are we doing now? Right now we're going to um, meet up to um, see how it goes in the national election of Sweden. <laughs> One question which we have worked with uh, for quite some time is the right to um, overrule your grades uh, to be able to apply for some kind of uh, second opinion, you know, to get your grade uh, re-examined and, and to get it uh, looked upon by somebody else. We have a lot of rights. It's like the student right charter, that's like uh, uh, the Swedish law. Oh, basically, uh, the, the Obeso student right charter. So we almost uh, f just a few um, uh, curriculums which we don't have. So the curriculum in Sweden is really good. The worst part is our uh, our work plan in school and you know what subjects do you teach and what uh, skills and knowledges do you uh, do you get I think that's the worst part uh, because uh, well it don't prepare you for the life it don't you don't learn how to work with your own personal development don't learn how to uh, how to lead and be a leader yourself for other people and lead yourself doesn't well it's a it's a long list you know in in competence which you don't gain in school which you really need to be able to work in society or to study in a higher university 
we're going towards a lot of governmental control. You know, you call to talk about governance and governmental control. And I think governmental control is really dangerous because I think that most of the decision has to be made on the local school uh, to make it function in the environment which the school is in. <laughs> we are sitting, uh, trying to focus on the big cut downs uh, that uh, you say are making the education bleed in Denmark. Uh, there are presented big cut downs on the, the Danish national budget this year. Today there's a banner drop and uh, handing out flyers in the morning. We've done that on schools and on the stations. And there's uh, we need to plan our bar. And we have uh, this uh, responsible bar on Thursday. We are planning that today. And then we have to go put up posters in the schools and then hand out flyers again tonight. And that's been moved to the city center. And then call around for people to see if we've, they've received our materials and such. And then we have to spread the demonstration on Facebook. And then there are things that go all through the, uh, the week. There is always a person that's Facebook responsible. And then flyers hand out in the morning and the e evening every day. Here you have tradition of Rautrad, ham and pesto. This is breakfast and dinner packed in one. And I really wish that our members, actually the best of people, really feel like being part of the European movement and being part of the best. I don't know. I mean, I'm proud of that. It really changed my life. And, and perspective and I I think it's important for, for, all, for all of us to sometime, you know, like, um, to see this world from another perspective. How about everybody calls yeah, his name? On our last day in Copenhagen, we checked out the city's big, completely democratic school. We have just had a big celebration of our 40 years anniversary. Yeah, maybe 700 people, Seven, students. 700. Yeah, we have um, a school meeting every Thursday. Where we like decide everything yeah. um, by direct democracy. Yeah. Like we vote. Everyone has a vote. Um, yeah. Teachers, students. Teachers uh, um, and students. Yeah, the meetings. It's only the people who want to come. If your parents are low income, then you can get some money from the state. The school magazine. Um, let's go this way. Then you can... In the big town square they made a human board game for the public to play which was making a statement about how it's kind of complete potluck whether you're born into a rich enough family to afford the things you have to pay for to go to school. Spring, when they were talking about cutting down on our financial support. Yes. Yeah. 
they were weak up. Uh, they they didn't do that anyways because we were planning on a really big demonstration, mm. um, and so they cancelled that. I think that was for me like one of my victories. If you really want to make a difference and really want to take action and really make um, a better education system for everybody, we need to stand together, not only in Denmark and Sweden and and our neighboring countries, but in the whole of Europe and actually in the whole of the world. Degrading education is an international tendency. Mm. Therefore, it, it's very important that we stand together mm. across borders mm. to, uh, to fight against the, the setbacks. Take me home, country roads. Everybody! Take me home, country roads. To the place where I belong. The plus side of this year is basically organized now. Yeah. All guests have confirmed. Hello, I'm Jesse and I'm a board member for Vassi. So I joined the bus tour in Brussels where we had a two day long board meeting. Um, and from there, we hopped on the Eurostar and we went across to UK. Uh, I'm okay, how are you? Nice Whoa, <laughs> what are you doing? And in the UK, we visited two very different schools um, where we held the same workshop on school student rights and how you can campaign for them. This was no uh, ordinary school in the sense that uh, this was a democratic school, which means that all the decisions concerning the school uh, are made by the students. We ask you to choose one of these rights um, that you feel kind of a particular affinity for or you feel is particularly exciting, um, and create a campaign in groups based around that right. I think not having your school fees funded is like really limits people to what kind of schools they can go to, which I think is really bad because some people I know would fit in so well at the school and would give a lot to our school or like another school like this, but they can't afford to come here. What would be really cool now is you can just present kind of the ideas that you came up with. So we're going to go around to school assemblies in the local area, explain our message and ask as many people as possible to sign a petition about it and then send the petition to the local authorities and then start a Facebook campaign. We're going to send the petition to the Minister of Education to show them how many people have sort of joined. Our, our plan is to start on a fairly small scale in South Devon because it seems like quite a good task to get free education in the whole of the country. But we were thinking that we would get um, vouchers so that every single parent gets a voucher to go to any school that their children would like to go to. Our idea is um, to have a student body attending and speaking or running workshops at all the teacher training conferences in England um, by law and so they could like tell the teachers what they think is effective for like teaching methods and what they think should like be included in the curriculum kind of thing. I, for my part this was a small life-changing experience just to see in reality all of these things you would like to try to implement and just to see that this is possible with kids like to have them express their opinions in such a way uh, at this age if, if I can say uh, it truly gives you an idea that like personal development could be so much greater if you just give the people like a chance to uh, have a certain sense of space to do what they feel like and, to kind of act on their impulses because you're only good at the things you really like to do. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jesse. You're so nice to meet you. Hi. I'm sorry, we're. Um, no, no, don't, don't. You can deliver change in this school. Brilliant. So, uh, if you all get into groups and you can work however you find is most effective. So, go around the table, work on the floor. 
but it's just with, with some with something as big as that, it would be it's difficult to arrange something that could be done about that because the, it's been happening in England for more than 300 years, and it would take a long time to change that. You, I think you can have a compromise. I don't think the students have to run the school. They can have a big say, and the school should have to act on the things they say. I know we don't quite think the striking would quite work at our school because most, a lot of people would just go out and stand on the field just to miss lessons. We wanted to tackle something very specific because it's, it's really easy to have big ideals and say, oh, we want this to be changed, we want this to be changed. Realistically, what, we're six students currently in, in one school. Um, so we thought we, we were going to do something realistic um, and we decided that by the end of this term that we wanted to have at least four lessons that utilise the IT um, equipment and rooms a week. We then hopped back on the Eurostar and made our way to Paris where we took part in UNL's national demonstrations about the retirement age. Nice, nice to meet you. Welcome to UNL Paris. Uh, so this is our office. Um, this is where we make the most uh, important tasks. Our most um, major uh, problem is that um, the government is trying to make profit about education. So this is our new president, Victor. <laughs> we are striking all the time because of the retirement uh, new reform by at the government that wants to move higher the age that you can retire. So we had a big strike on the 23rd, one on the 7th, on the 7th, where we were uh, 2.7 million people in the street. Uh, on the 23rd we were 3 million, tomorrow is the next one, where it should be hopefully 3 million or more people in the street. So After a talk marking the change of president, we had an after party. Everyone face this mirror now. Come. Come here everyone. Okay, um, again, I'm Sue, I'm from the USO, which is the union of um, the Swiss students' organizations. Um, I organized the event here, it's about student rights because of the OBESO, which is here. Yeah, here in Switzerland, um, the USO struggles a lot to get enough participants for the, for the event. We say that in Switzerland they just have it too good. They don't see that it could be much better, that we should have more influence on what's happening in school and not just be um, kind of consumers of school. Um, Here you go. Right now. Student rights. Come on, guys. At least one student right by person. <laughs> Prepared teachers. The one teacher at my school was always unprepared. There are no consequences for him, and that's not good. I will give you statements, like, for example, an apple is red. Yes. Then on this side, you don't agree, on this side, you agree. My school is perfect. It's a mess. In, in most cantons, it's just impossible to find answers to simple questions. What, uh, what can I do if a teacher gives me a, a mark which I don't agree to? 
it's difficult if you don't know yeah. where you can find laws. There's much to be done. If we all imagine what was told us over all these years, and I, I think much, much was forgot. Every obituary event I come back and I'm like totally motivated because there's so many people working on the same topics, so many people fighting for the same things as I am. I'm not as alone as I sometimes feel when I'm organizing an event on my own or something. We got some chocolate from Sue's. <laughs> After 200 meters, turn right. Hello and welcome to Vienna. I am from AKS and we're right now in Vienna um, between two schools. Our autumn campaign on social inclusion because it's a big issue in Austria and our organization has been dealing with social inclusion for quite a long time um, and it's a really big problem that children that come from families with a lower socioeconomic background don't have equal chances than children with um, rich parents and we want to give everyone the possibility of a good education and that's what we're fighting for at the moment. The whole action is about that they have cuts in the education so they use toilet paper instead of books where they dress really warm instead of heating and the, the mask she is wearing, the, the girl who is talking, is like the education minister telling them Yeah, move together, we have rented out your classroom and I'm really sorry but use these uh, beer boxes instead of chairs and it's just like this whole approach. Then AKS took us to a local school where they ran some workshops and they also spoke to some students about how they felt about school. Well, yes, um, mostly I do, but like there are some, some times like um, where I don't really feel that I'm cared about at all. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like I, don't, I don't have the feeling that um, the, the personal opinion of each student counts a lot. Mm -hmm. And I would really like to be asked more, and because I think there are so many students who have really, really good ideas to improve school and the whole school system. And if, if like the government would just get get in a school and ask the students what could be done better, I think there would be incredible ideas. And I mean, just think about how much school system could actually be improved if just the people were just asked. real life related, you know. Um, like we learn so much stuff we're never going to use in our future. And I spent the last semester in America and there we were able to choose the subjects we were attending. And I think this is much more life related than the school system in Austria. And I would really love to be able to choose like more than more than two or three subjects. Hi, I'm Iris and we're today in, in St. Gilgen in, in Salzburg in, in Austria. Uh, at the Congress of AKS about uh, educational policies. Okay, um, my name is Sarah and we're here for a weekend to um, speak about democracy and education and, and politics. And um, in this group here we did something about um, democracy in schools. And we're just um, discussing about the budgeting and the financial aspect of school and how we're going to solve problems in the future. I think that um, we, we have to fight together and our battles are pretty similar in every country and we should give everyone the possibility of a good education and we should stand up together for our rights. Thank you. 
I'm going to be taking you to the DOS headquarters today. Our goal, our final goal is that uh, all this transport to schools should be free of charge. So we are standing in front of the building of the National Railway Station. Yeah, the goal was that um, we would like to cooperate, cooperate more with them and uh, that we would like to promote their program. The program is called uh, To School with Train. So, uh, so that the pupils would prefer to go to, attend, to, go to, to school with the train uh, than by bus. Of course, in the towns or cities where that's possible. Of course, if there is no uh, possibility for to use a train, then of course they have to use a bus. You said something about having the most people who use the railways at the moment are young people, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that this will change when the system is more developed, so that you don't need to make money with students, because this is like extra money for education. We call it hidden tuition fees, hidden tuition fees. Even though you're not directly linked to the education system, but at the same time, this is an ob <coughs> obstacle for the students. If you're a bigger group, more than five people, then you have a uh, special... Uh, 80%. Yeah, 80% and oh, so on. Okay. They also have the opportunity to promote it our, over our uh, web page. Oh, and okay. uh, they will also get our mailing list mm -hmm. from all schools uh, in Slovenia. <coughs> And they will, they will have the chance to promote it directly to the to the pupils and directly to the schools. We met the educational minister in Slovenia personally and talked to him about better transportation situation for the school students. Having your six bags or, <laughs> or us being your slaves. <laughs> In European Youth Forum, we are really focusing our work lately on youth rights. Access to education, access to quality education, and all the direct policy measures that are supporting the autonomy of the young people are crucial and indispensable part of any discussion on the youth rights. We are trying really to promote a right-based approach, especially towards Council of Europe, but also European Union, to change the mindset of the people and to change the legislation that is dealing with youth rights today. UDS is the Italian Student Union. We represent the school students in Italy and we work in more than 60 uh, towns in Italy. Uh, we represent students, we organize meetings, demonstrations, and we work in the student concerts uh, in the schools and in the cities. <laughs> okay, hello, I'm Monica, I'm from UDS, and now we are in Rome, there are, and we are going to our national office in the center of Rome. Uh, in the afternoon we'll be at University Sapienza, okay, the biggest university in Rome, to have a big assembly for the students' movement that started last week on 8th of October. Okay, hi, my name is Andrea Sagiadi. I'm from uh, UDS in Italy. Today we're here to say no to the current political status in Italy, to say no against the school that being closed and uh, against people who have no job and no security of a uh, future. So we want to say that we want a future, we want to keep fighting and we'll do this in this October and we'll keep on doing it for the whole year and as soon as we can get some results from the government.
tomorrow we'll be in Naples to have a, another union with the students of the, our territories. The drive to Naples is pretty perilous. Please tell me uh, how you felt about driving in Napoli for the first time. <laughs> very, very hungry. Our government last year cut them more than 8 billion euros to our education. So we are fighting against that decision and we, we want better school, better school buildings, better system of education, the new pedagogical methods, and we fight for the right to education. So we have facilities for transport, for uh, books, and so on. And uh, we struggle also for citizenship, uh, a real citizenship for the students, talking about social campaigns, and for that reason we are unifying. We are creating a network with university students, talking about welfare, and migrant people, environment, and social justice and so on. In particular now we are writing the students' point of view of school and we are writing the students' reforms of the school. We dislike the reforms of the governments, so we are, now we are writing with meetings in the school, and discussions, how a reform of the school, and we want to present it to the government, to the parliament. This is Balkan hospitality, you know, first lunch. <laughs> Hello, I'm Damon from Asubik. Hi, hi. <laughs> I'm Sandra Valetic, the president of ASUBIH. Uh, the biggest project of ASUBIH was the Learn and Prosper. We educated about 2,000 uh, students in a whole uh, country, in a whole Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, education was in this proje project about teamwork, leadership, uh, fundraising, strategy, uh, communication, and uh, uh, about union of school students' rights. Our organization is really young, if I can say that, young. And uh, a lot of new school students will hear for us. And I think that is the most important thing in this moment. We have a complex educational system and complex political situation in our country. But we use Obasu as one of the examples how we can fix that. Because a lot of people in Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, do not have like primary education, not at all. So it's a big problem here. We have like 13 ministers of education, and actually every mi ministry of education is working for themselves. Can you follow me? Great. This is our house, and in this house we made um, so many good ideas and projects and we will continue to work that. As a board member of ASUBIH, I use this opportunity to invite all members of, of ASU to work together, to share knowledge, to share power together and to fight for our rights. Thank you. So we left ASUBIH, picked up Ivica, and Mumi almost got his driving license suspended for not understanding local traffic. The education is the power and the key is the key to, you know, to everything in your life. So we prepared ourselves for hundreds of miles of potholes to Serbia. But as the weather got worse, our sat-nav couldn't work out where we were. 
saying that the roads we were on didn't exist. So we were pretty glad to arrive. Hi, I'm Nainta from UNSS. I'm coming from Serbia and here we have really young national organization dealing with school students. We exist only for seven years but we've done a great job if I can say. Uh, the greatest achievement we've done is that we changed law on education. So school students now have right to vote in school board which is the main body in school. And I think that that was really important for improvement of education in Serbia. Hey guys! We started this, this event uh, with the great performance and the main goal of that performance was um, explanation what is the main difference between 2000 and 2010 here. Yeah, and besides that we also have a photo exhibition as well as the quotes of uh, Ministry of Youth Sport and some of the youth activists in Serbia, so I hope you enjoyed it. When we said like okay we're gonna change the law, people like oh no it's no it's never gonna happen you know. But then uh, when we changed the law of education, it was really really big step forward. In Serbia, it's it's easy. All you need to to have a mobile phone of a young MP, and the next thing is a meeting in the national assembly. Uh, that's the thing what we did uh, a year ago. And uh, from the time you got first time in the assembly uh, till the time we changed the law, it passed a few months. In Serbia, it's uh, very easy to get in touch with the young MPs. We show that and we are uh, looking forward to uh, change another laws together. So far we work on this law on education. Right now we are working on law on youth and we are also having a huge national project we are trying to implement social day in Serbia. The young people have their own kitchen, they have their own space because they fought for it in the school council and they got it. That's the first thing, uh, just in Sokobanya. Uh, the, the message is that the young people uh, who are in school have to, uh, to, to take the chance they got uh, from the law. Leaving Serbia was quite a mission because, apart from having some problems with our money, the roads were still getting worse and the GPS was still dodgy and Eric and Mumi were starting to feel the pain. I really think it's safe out of window and sleep. We saw one quite expensive motel and then had some luck. Yeah! We sleep here. The next morning we set off to Romania, the last chapter in our epic journey. I'm really starting to get a sense now of how far we've come what the kind of whole point of this all is, you know, to hopefully not just make a fun road trip documentary, but to leave a sort of legacy to remind the Basu members just how much they have to gain from each other and how worth it is to look at ways they can work together. Hi, I'm Kinga, the president of the MOKOS, the Union of Hungarian High School Students from Romania. The problem with the Romanian educational system is that we are learning uh, too much things, in too much, we are going into too much details, and we don't focus on our career and we don't focus on our future. So um, we just wanted to have a much European uh, educational law. So they wanted to cut the English classes and the foreign language classes and the uh, sport hours and we just went on the streets and protest. I think it's uh, 
for Marcos. It's very good to be a member of Bessa because, first of all, we hear a lot, hear a lot of interesting things. We learn um, a lot of things for, from other countries, um, and um, we like opening our pr perspectives. Like to be a member of a best it's easier for us to cooperate with other national organizations because uh, we can meet we can change ideas and we can do common projects i think the overall feeling is that it was a success, not only in the fact that we managed to travel these vast distances without major catastrophes, but also in the fact that we were able to physically go and meet most of the people we are working together with, which I think gave it a completely new perspective and showed me that although we might all be focusing on different aspects of a certain topic in different circumstances, the topic still remains the same. We are all fighting for the same rights and the same respect and that extraordinary things can be accomplished when we work together. But I guess some would just call it the Obesu spirit.